This is the new Nixie Wizard, which just launched on January 9th, a brand new product from our friends at Nixie. It's a wireless GameCube style controller for the Switch that you can also split up and use as GameCube style Joy-Cons. The GameCube controller is legendary. It's iconic and for a good reason. If you grew up with the GameCube, chances are you love the GameCube controller, whether it be for Smash or whatever else you played back in the day. It was a natural evolution from the N64 controller. You went from a controller that didn't make a lot of sense to one that made a whole lot of sense. And then they came out with the Wii and kind of threw all that out the window. But for $70, is the wizard worth it if you're looking for a wireless GameCube style experience on the Switch? By the way, thank you to Nixie for sending this out for a review. This doesn't affect my review and my opinion in any way. But uh, anyway, let's move on. The Wizard retails for $69.99, but I will have a coupon code in the description, by the way. Out of the box, the ring around the thumbsticks is the classic GameCube-style octagonal shape. This makes it great for fighting games, and especially popular for games like Smash. But if that's not your style, or maybe you're playing a game where you want to change that, you can actually swap these things out for a traditional round ring to make it a little bit more like a modern controller if you want to. It's a little bit hard to remove, in fact I kind of struggled while doing it for this footage, but it's at least doable. One of the biggest and most important features of this controller is the joysticks. This time around, Nixie is using Hall Effect joysticks. If you don't know what that means, they're essentially using magnets in the controller for the joysticks to work, rather than physical contacts like you would find in the traditional Joy-Cons, for example. That physical contact wears down over time, which is what causes Joy-Con drift. So without those physical contacts to wear down, you're essentially never going to experience drift in this controller. That's a huge, huge thing, especially when Nintendo is still making Joy-Cons and Pro Controllers that have drift. So that's definitely a big selling point here and something to consider if you're looking at these. It has adjustable levels of rumble, although in my opinion the rumble out of the box works perfectly fine, feels like basically any controller. And you also have motion controls, so if you want to do any gyro aiming or anything like that, you have it. I reviewed other Nixie controllers before and just like those it has macros that you can use to program the button on the back of each side of the Joy-Cons or you can just program a single button if you wish. There's also a turbo mode which lets you assign a button that you can hold down to perform that function multiple times instead of having to spam the button. It kind of lets you do some of the actions in certain games a little bit faster than you normally would with just the speed of spamming your thumb. This can be great for games like Animal Crossing, spamming through text and dialogue that you've read a million times. There are LED indicators on each controller for both the turbo and the macro functions, letting you know if they're programmed or not. And interestingly, there's even LEDs for the A, B, X, and Y buttons on the right Joy-Con. The only annoying thing that it does is once in a while when I have it docked and asleep, the LEDs will just kind of light up on their own for a couple seconds. I don't know if that's anything to be concerned about as far as power consumption or battery drain, I mean it is charging on the dock. The triggers and back buttons are all very clicky and satisfying. They give you a good tactile feedback to let you know that you press that button. Unlike the original GameCube controller, there are two shoulder buttons in addition to the two triggers. The two triggers are also very quick and responsive in comparison to the old GameCube style where you had a bit of a travel distance for those buttons. The face buttons aren't clicky, but they are also tactile and responsive. Compared to the official Pro Controller, they feel about the same. No mushiness here. The D-pad is also decent, a little out of the way in comparison to like a modern controller, but it feels nice and it works well, and unfortunately you can't really say that for all D-pads these days. True to the GameCube style controller, the X and Y are, I would say, kind of reversed. Not even reversed, but just totally in different places than they would normally be. And honestly, to me, this didn't take a lot of getting used to. It's just one of those things that makes sense. Now obviously you can use it like a normal wireless GameCube controller. The two pieces connect to this one little centerpiece that is just plastic. And if you feel like using this thing on the go, you just connect it to the Switch itself like Joy-Cons, and it looks and feels ridiculous. In a good way. It's kind of hilarious how huge it is, but it feels totally comfortable and usable. I almost feel like this has to be kind of similar to how that old GameCube keyboard controller must have felt. It does include a USB-C cable and each one has a USB-C port on the bottom so you can charge them one at a time, or you can just attach them to the Switch and dock it and let it charge that way, just like you would with a regular Joy-Con. The rails on the controllers are weirdly a serrated plastic. I don't love how it sounds when you connect it to the Switch, but at least I don't think it will scratch or damage the switch since the rails on the switch itself 
are metal, the plastic isn't going to scratch the metal. If anything, the plastic on the controller will wear down over time. There are shoulder buttons on the sides of each of them, meaning that in theory, you could use these horizontally, like using them like two little controllers. And honestly, I think if you do that, you're insane. It's extremely uncomfortable. And I have arthritis. But hey, at least you have that option if that's something you want to try. Maybe you can use this to play Dark Souls in some way and stream it on Twitch. I also think it's kind of funny how the controllers protrude quite a bit from the back of the Switch. It's not a complaint or a criticism or anything, it just kind of looks funny. Because these things are so huge in comparison to really any other Joy-Con. But this emulates that GameCube shape, so it's going to have that fat curvy back. I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be great for platformers, maybe fighting games, not, not so much fighting games if you use the D-pad because it is a little bit out of the way. What it is not going to excel at is maybe first person shooters. That right thumbstick, it just feels really far away, like I really have to stretch my finger and thumb if I want to hold the trigger and the stick at the same time. Again, you do have gyro aiming at least, but it's just not the most comfortable experience. If you have something else that you'd rather use for shooters, I would use that. That all said, this is a very comfortable controller. One that, I mean, if you love the GameCube controller, you're gonna like this. I haven't had any issues with wireless connectivity or responsiveness, no issues with buttons not working, the battery life has been great, but yeah, it's it's been great to use. I don't know how precise it is compared to an actual GameCube controller as far as the size and whatnot, but the grip, the ergonomics, it's all very comfortable, very usable, and it just feels right at home with the big fat A button, and it really has a lot of what people liked about the GameCube controller. I really like it, and I think you're gonna like it if you're looking for a GameCube controller. If you've seen this online and you're thinking that might be for me, well hopefully this video convinced you that it is for you. And again, I will have an affiliate link in the description from Nixie, as well as a coupon code so you can get a little bit of a discount off that $70 price tag if you feel so inclined. It helps the channel and it helps you save a little bit of money as well because you wouldn't have that coupon code without this video, would you? All right, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you again, Nixie, for sending this out for review. And that's all I got to say about that. Peace out.